if you listen now, you see how it's sidling? Yeah. See how it's come up a little bit? Yeah. Now there's a little button round here. Oh, all right. There. And it is it. It's designed to lift the dash pot in here. Oh, yeah. And it's strong loaded, but then you feel it go under the dash pot and you lift it a sixteenth of an inch. Yeah. If it raises like that, it's too rich. So we now, wow. and what it should do, it's come over the side. Yeah. It's very easy to do. Yeah, it's a little button here. Yeah, okay, I've got that. You can hear it going up again, so it's still too rich. And this is the mixture screw just yeah. here. Okay. This lever right down the bottom is the adjusting of the mixture. That's it. Now, when I raise it now, it starts to falter. Yes. That's just dead right. Just raised up a little bit, so we'll just put a little bit on it. Yeah. That's it. Now it's just it's dead right. It's not the idle now. Still, it's still around 650, but it's now smoother. It's smooth, isn't idle. it? Yeah. So I'll just bring it up a fraction. Now that is the big screw here. So what's the big screw? The big screw is air bleed. Okay, right. And what you do is you screw it out to raise the engine speed, and you screw it in to reduce it. Right. It lets air in. That is the big screw, look. Okay. And whatever you do on this one, you have to do on the other, okay. and we use the, the screwdriver slot as a reference, so we have got a quarter of a turn on that one, right. we screw it out, and this one here, which you may see a little bit easier, I can show you a screw, uh, oh, yeah. a, um, let me show me on that, yeah, uh, uh, that's what yeah. to explain it a bit better, yeah. So it's simple and straightforward. Whatever you do on one, you must do the other because the carburetors are balanced. Yeah, okay. I balanced them on the engine. So as long as you do the same, it will stay balanced, the carburetors. Okay. If you do one more than the other, it will put them out of balance. Now the choke thing we're talking about is this one here. Now I'll just have a look at those in a minute. They must never ever touch that. You do not adjust the, you do not adjust the idle with that. Because oh. what that does oh. is it opens that up. Yeah and then it alters how the mixture is read. So you can conceivably have it running too lean. Oh, you see, good. because what it actually does is that this is always on idle, is fully closed, and the air is taken through the dash pot. Through the dash pot and it comes out that hole there. Good Lord. It's, a, it's simple and it's just it's having a, a sensitive ear. When you raise that thing, it yeah. should just raise a little bit and then falter. Okay. If it okay. raises and that. stay up, it's too rich. So if it, it falters adjustment. almost straight away, it's a tiny bit too lean. Okay, I get that. So you screw this, those those mixture ones, you screw them down to richen them, you screw them up to lean it. Because okay. when you screw it down, you actually pull the arm, which pulls the main jet down a little bit, away from the needle. Oh. The needle is tapered. So when you pull it down, it allows more fuel past it. More mixture. So mixture, more, yeah. richer, up, leaner. Okay. Well, she so sounds right. It's a simple, very simple thing. So that, you know, totally different from, say, a four barrel, like a big American. That's right. Well, thing. of course, uh, some of those, the, now they're complicated because some of them adjust the mixture hmm. on idle and some let air in. Ah, OK. You see? see, so you've got I to see. know which one it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, Holly's usually they let air in, mm. but Carters, Ford, um, any of those type of card, uh, Ed card brothers, they Endelbrock, they mm. usually let, they usually adjust the, adjust the mixture. fuel mixture, uh -huh, okay. they adjust the air, uh, oh, the fuel in. Yeah. in. The, the little bronze bushes are, are mounted in the bob weights and they wear and they allow them, instead of the bob weights going out in a centrifugal plane, yeah they go up in a banana shape and they chatter oh, right. so the timing goes backwards or forwards on the engine like that you see yeah, so it's good. not good so that, that sorted out. I hand make all those and make all the tightness and you know it all becomes very nice yes yeah, it yeah. does yeah it does wow that's messy that's the big ends which are spinning fast so when you're traveling 3000 rpm or more yeah then that centrifuges the 
carbon out of the oil so you get good oil through to the big ends but it deposits the carbon so mm. if you don't let the oil get sooty that doesn't deposit right. See? right that's why I suggest always 3,000 miles maximum with the oil change ideally once a year yeah because oil does actually deteriorate the, mm. it's it's not the original base oil all oils are the same even synthetics have a base oil which is standard it's the additive package that deteriorates mm. and the same in petrol petrol only has they reckon about a shelf life of about three months now wow. before it because they've got all sorts of additives in them to keep the uh, engine clean inside oh, that's interesting. you've got detergents and all sorts in unleaded you see which we benefit from because wow. this is a sooty engine so it keeps, stops those carbons yeah. those soots from building up too much in the combustion chamber so we do benefit there from that but of course you only have a very relatively small shelf life mm. so if you leave the car over the winter you put it up with a full tank of fuel it will run like a bag of horror bag of nails or a bag of you know what um, until you've emptied that and put a fresh tank of fuel in well, when that. you come to start it up again but of course what it, what it also does is it it varnishes things oh you see so you oh. probably varnished up the the float vol valves it may even have coated the diaphragm in the fuel pump oh. so that would now have to work hard to pump fuel instead of having its natural free action from a rubber diaphragm right. 